thank God for Israel. It has survived the kingdom of Egypt and Pharaoh. It has survived and escaped through Assyria. It has come through Babylon. It has come through the onslaughts of the Medians and the Persians. It's come through the Greek Empire. It's come through the Roman Empire. It's come through Hitler and the Holocaust. It has come through anti-Semitism and anti-Israelism of the modern era. And it will come through the Antichrist and the revised Rome. Israel is forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Amen. God is so good. And today is Mother's Day. Well, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. I don't know. You really honor your mother, Linda. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could we say an amen? Amen. You don't have your father's tongue, you have your mother's tongue. <laughs> the father is the head of the family, but you have your mother's tongue. <laughs> But only when you come to Father God, you get the Father's son. Yes. Hallelujah. Everyone's got the Father's son. Yes. Hallelujah. Great if you speak your mother tongue. But you, it's important to have the Father's son. Because the Father's son is for eternity. Yes. Everything will cease. Hallelujah. But love will remain. Yes. Father, we truly want to thank you for your holy word. We pray that your word would speak to our hearts, that Rhema would come forth, bringing faith into us. And we would be praying the Spirit and building up our most holy faith. We thank you by praying the Spirit, our faith will be nourished and watered. And we will move on from faith to faith, strength to strength, victory to victory, glory to glory, grace to grace. Bless your people abundantly as we go through the book of Isaiah in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 For a quick recap of the Song of Solomon. All know about his wives and his concubines and the Shulamite women, woman who was altogether 700, 301, so it becomes 1001. But he wrote 1005 songs, I think better than any songwriter better than Paul McCartney and George Harrison. It's no comparison whatsoever. Because those, some of those were under drug abuse and abused and demarked. But thank God for these songs of Solomon. But the song of songs, the best song was the song of Solomon. And it's recorded in the Bible. Praise the Lord. It's a love song. It's talking about the lover and the bridegroom. Solomon means peace, shalom. Amen. And Shulamite too means peace. They were a made for each other couple. Historically, we see it depicts God and Israel. God is the husband and Israel is his wife. It also depicts Solomon and the shepherdess. We also see the future of Christ and his church. But we also see the husband and his wife. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for pure love. We thank God for agape, the new covenant of love. The love of God. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love brings healing. Love brings deliverance. Love brings acceptance. Love brings forgiveness. Love conquers. Love is so powerful. Amen. 
It starts with that initial love and then it goes on to faltering love. That every vision, every love is tested. Amen. Amen. In your love relationship, it will always be tested so that it would come through the fire pure and holy. Amen. The faltering love, it will become steadfast. It will grow and it will glow and it will flow. It will mature and turn into perfect love. God is perfecting love in us. This temporal life is an apprenticeship. We are learning to love. That is why that hallmark of a Christian is forgiveness. He receives forgiveness from his lover, Jesus. And he gives forgiveness to other members of the body. And even to the enemy. Not the devil, but humans who may be the enemy. So God is perfecting his love so that we can live for eternity in love. In Christ, in love. For all the gifts will cease. The gifts are to equip us, including tongues. To equip us for eternity. The golden chapter of love, 1 Corinthians 13. All gifts will cease, everything will cease. But what will abide is faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are charitable institutions for? It's all come from the word of God. If you do charity, it means you're, you're expressing love. You're demonstrating love. But today, the wicked one is coming against Christian trust who demonstrate love. They've forgotten the very foundation and the reason and purpose for a social action, charitable trust. The trust is none other than the Holy Spirit of Jesus. Hallelujah. They want to cut the lifelines. And how do you expect us to move forward upward? So we will stand strong Amen. and continue steadfast in our faith Amen. for the Lord. Be burning with the love passion for God. Love zeal ablaze. In my early Christian life, I read a track by Leonard Ravenhill and I would give out those beautiful tracks. It says love seal a blaze for the Lord. You have to have love. You have to have the zeal of the Lord and it should be on fire. As if it's the last day you are going to live. Give out the gospel. So your passion for God must be on fire. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your emotions, with all your will, with all your strength, and have fiery compassion towards the lost souls. Many years ago, I wrote an article for the Vision magazine, and I wrote an article on worship. There I put, God gave me the statement, passion for God, compassion for the lost. And Pastor Joseph just loved that statement. And he put it as a punchline in his church. That's a wonderful, romantic love relationship. We're going to Kerala. It's a strong mood of Pentecostals. And there, I'm not talking about Joel, but they don't want gold ornaments and this thing, that thing. But Solomon tells me that the bridegroom wears ornaments and the bride wears jewels. We have misinterpreted what Peter says 
when he says, talks about the outward and he talks about the inward beauty. He doesn't say, do not adorn yourself on the outside. But adorning yourself on the outside is zero if you are not beautiful on the inside. Stay beautiful on the inside and let it overflow on the outside, but not as a distraction. Hallelujah. Especially in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Interpretation needs a balance. You rightly divide the word of truth. You talk about dispensations. You talk about Old and New Testament covenants. You talk about law and grace. Everything needs the right interpretation. And what is the right interpretation? Scripture interprets scripture. When Jesus would bring forth a parable, the disciples would go quietly to him and say, you've not understood this. Please tell us. And Jesus would explain to them, like the parable of the sower and the four soils. And he goes on to explain what is the meaning of the parable. So in a similar way, we need to study God's word through cross-references and know the real purpose, meaning, and interpretation of the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We move on to Isaiah. Isaiah means Jehovah is salvation. Isaiah is a very unique book because it contains both the advents of Christ, the first coming and the second coming of Christ. Unfortunately, Many of the Jews have not recognized the first coming of Yahushua, the Jew, as the Messiah. They're still waiting for the first coming of their Messiah. Isn't it sad? They will recognize the Messiah at the second coming, not as bridegroom, but as the judge. At the end of the seven year tribulation. But before the tribulation will be the rapture and the bride of Christ will comprise Jew and Greek. Those Messianic Jews who have repented and recognized Jesus as the Messiah and have received him into their lives as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. But the majority of them have not yet received the Lord. I want to tell you in the world today in the kingdom of darkness, the Jews are on the top notch. We are the key guys in the Illuminati. And in the other world, the Jews are also on the top. Because God's covenant with them has blessed them. You talk about scientists, if they are American, they will be American Jews. If they are Russian, they are Russian Jews. If German, German Jews. Polish, Polish Jews. So many, you look at the whole list of Nobel Prize winners, okay? In medicine, physics, all kinds of streams, God has blessed Israel. But they are stubborn. They have the hardness of heart. They have unbelief. And we have to pray for them. Hallelujah. We are talking about the suffering servant. Christ is the suffering servant in the book of Isaiah. What I wrote here is the suffering servant learns obedience to God followed by Adonai's blessings. Obedience will always bring blessings into your life. But if you do not obey, sufferings will teach you to obey. Have I made myself clear? If the Son of God learned obedience in the things that he suffered, how much more you and I? God allows sufferings in Christians. So when you preach the gospel, don't tell people everything will be honky-dory once you receive Christ. In fact, the storm may become greater. But the difference is, 
Christ is in the boat. Christ is inside of you when you receive him. And he will take care of you. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53 verse 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Oh my. He's the righteous son of God. But there is a purpose for being bruised. He has put him to grief. There's a purpose for the grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Jesus took the responsibility of being the Savior of the world. Your Savior, my Savior. The book of Isaiah is a miniature Bible. It's a mini Bible. How many chapters does the Bible have, church? 66, full marks. A big hand to you. Wonderful, wonderful. How many books does the Bible have? 66 books. And how many books does the Old Testament have? 39, bit bats, amen. And New Testament? 27. So you look at the book of Isaiah and it has 66 chapters. Beautiful, isn't it? Reflecting the Bible. And the first part of Isaiah is 39 chapters. And 39 chapters talk about the judgment of God. Oh my on Judah and on immoral and idolatrous men. He talks about judgment on the surrounding nations that have sinned against God. He talks about the judgment on the whole earth because of sin. Judgment must come for God cannot allow such blatant sin to go unpunished forever. Amen. But 27 chapters, the latter half of Isaiah is like the New Testament, amen? It's the message of hope. You want to say hope? Oh. My hope is in Christ and not in the Pope. <laughs> no. The Messiah is coming as a Savior and a Sovereign. To beat a cross and to wear a crown. Amen. He came as a savior to be nailed on the cross and crucified on the cross and crushed on the cross as the suffering servant. But he's coming as a judge. He's coming as a ruler. He's coming as the king of kings and lord of lords for a crown. And he's bringing crowns with him to give you and I the soul winner's crown, the crown of righteousness. Amen. Wonderful, isn't it? Isaiah's ministry was for 40 years. Isaiah is full of prophecy. The Old Testament has 300 prophecies of the coming Messiah. And Isaiah has a great number of them among the 300. There are five aspects of the saving work of Christ mentioned in the book of Isaiah. The first one is his wholehearted sacrifice. It's firstly the burnt offering. When you give yourself only to the Lord, it's a burnt offering unto the Lord. And Jesus fulfilled all burnt offerings of the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Could we read it? Chapter 52, verses 13 to 15. Let's look at some of these verses. Very good. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, 
So his visage was marred, his face was marred. More than any man, and his form more than the sons of men, so shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut them out, said him, for what had not been told them they shall see, and what they had not heard they shall consider. Hallelujah. This is the Messiah's atonement, verses 13 to 15 of chapter 52. The second aspect is his perfect character, which is a meal offering. He fulfilled all the meal offerings because his character was perfect. Sinless man, Jesus, Yahushua. Chapter 53, verses 1 to 3. Who has believed our report? We talk about reputation. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. From all the research and archaeology and all the scholars notes I figure out Jesus was more or less five feet nine in height he did not have blonde hair he had raven like hair black hair he was a Middle Easterner as man I believe he did not have blue eyes he had brown eyes he was not fat he was not thin he was just right he was not fair, he was not dark, I believe. He had British complexion. Now you know more or less how Jesus looked? Hello? That's his image. May not have looked great, not so handsome, but he was the Lamb of God. And we have to behold him. Look and listen to him. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords, born amongst animals in the manger, in the feeding trough. Very symbolic, very appropriate, very ironic. He is the bread of life that feeds the world. He was born in a manger, in a feeding trough to feed animals. Any man without the Holy Spirit is a beast. To be honest, sinful man is fallen. He's like a beast, but God lifts him up to restore the image and likeness of God in him. Amen. Hallelujah. So be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you have the initial earnest payment, down payment, that the Lord has given by giving us the Holy Spirit, and we are born again, it doesn't mean that every day I have to fill myself because I have less of the Holy Spirit and the incomplete Holy Spirit. God is spirit. Our God is Elohim, the plurality singular God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but yet oneness and one, one God. Hallelujah. We have to glorify our God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, he is perfect in character. He is not only totally committed, wholly given to God as a burnt offering and a perfect character and meal offering. Those five offerings, right? In the Old Testament, it's fulfilled. We see thirdly, he brought atonement that Issues in peace with God. So it's a peace offering. He's become a peace offering 
chapter 53, verses 4 to 6. Chapter 53, verses 4 to 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities. So you're getting the reason why he was bruised, why he was wounded. For our transgressions, for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 6 And we, like sheep, have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Wow. What a deliverance we got. And to have peace with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Number four. He paid for the transgression of the people in the sin offering. So he was made a sin offering as well. Isaiah 53 verses 7 to 9. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its sharers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. Verse 9. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Hallelujah. Number 5. He died for the effects of sin. For the effects of sin. There are consequences of sin. Sin wounds. Sin bruises. Sin breaks. Sin mourns. Sin plays havoc in any life. Trespass offering. We were trespassers. You see big boats put near properties. Trespassers will be prosecuted. We have overstepped the boundary of the Lord. We have stepped into the property of sin. And so we will be prosecuted. We are prosecuted and put to death, to hell. But Jesus, your Savior and my Savior, paid the price. He's the judge. He's the advocate. His Holy Spirit is the jury. But in the courtroom, he's the one who pays the bill. He pays the price. And he sets you free. Amen. Not with gold and silver. But with his very own blood. Amen. For there is life in the blood. Amen. And life comes from his blood. Amen. Because all our blood has death. The blood of bulls and animals and birds. Only cover. And they only covered the sins of the people. But the blood of Yahushua cleanses us from all sin. The covering was only temporal until fulfilled in Yahushua. And all the five offerings have been fulfilled. The burnt offering, the meal offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, 
and the trespass offering. Amen. Give yourselves wholly to the Lord. Don't put one leg in Christianity and the other leg somewhere else. Don't even put one leg in one church and the other leg in another church. You will tear apart. No, Pastor, all are the same. We serve the same God. No, you have to be committed to the family you are planted in. Make up your mind. You don't look. After work, you don't go to your neighbor's house and sleep there. You go back to your family. That doesn't mean you are at enmity with your neighbor. You will also give them cake. You will also give them biryani. But you go back to your home. This is your home. Preacher comes into town, come on my YouTube, this tube, that tube, and people often go down the tube. Spiritually. <laughs> really, I'm telling you, if you have not understood what I just said, you're a tube light. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, be committed yeah. to Christ and to the local church. Yes. Absolutely, yes. God has not forsaken using people with his purpose through the local church with divine government. In a home, in a family, there is daddy, mommy, and the children, and maybe the maids, whatever. There is divine order there. Amen. There is discipline. There is love. There is provision. There is protection. Sometimes people, speakers, itinerary speakers, walk through the city and they make the church weaker instead of strengthening the church. The fivefold ministry of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers with true ones will always equip individuals to be committed to the local church. Yes, they will always strengthen the local church. When I go ministering to other churches and in other places in the world, I will always see that I am strengthening the local church. Amen. And I will always uphold that local church pastor. Not to show the congregation that, hey, here, I am the deliverer, I am the healer, I am your savior, now follow me. <laughs> no way. We go to strengthen the hands of the local pastor. He has been laboring. Who comes for your funeral? Who comes for dedicating your house? Benny Hinn doesn't come in. Just an example. I love Benny Hinn. He does speak out. Lovely man of God. He loves the Lord. But just an example. An itinerant minister comes, the prophet of the shock on a mamura basha. Now don't get me wrong. And gives you personal prophet prophecies and you're tickled about it. Come on, that personal prophecy was the same thing what the word of God is saying. <laughs> casting of demons. Get out, get out, get out. All people are focused on this casting of demons. The demon has to that person has to go in the green room and be delivered and come out with white dance and all that. Say, I am beloved. Amen. No tamasha in the house of the Lord. Okay? People are getting carried away with unnecessary fireworks. What when the Antichrist will come and bring down fire from heaven? They're going to bow before him? No way. Hallelujah. When an itinerant minister comes, he will not draw people to himself. He will always strengthen the hand of the local pastor. Hallelujah. Otherwise he will run a muck like a like a bull in a china shop and leave the mess and walk out and the poor pastor has to clean up all the mess. Come on. 
You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm talking about? Do you know what church is all about? It's not about religion. It's about relationships. It's about a base. It's about a family. Come on, church. Wake up. Amen. Be mature. Be perfect. As your heavenly Father is perfect. Have the pure milk of God's word. Hallelujah. Have the meat of God's word. The food of God's word. Unadulterated. Don't just go on YouTube and pick up any preacher here and there and everywhere. You will be confused. Yes. How long you want to see people delivered? How long you want to see people healed? Why don't you do it? Only all our life we are spectators, spectators. Have you heard that miracle? Oh, you should have been there. Oh. Are you, when did you last pray for someone and someone got healed? Come on, grow up. Grow up. Grow up, church. I thank God for our church. You are mature. But I'm sharing this with you so you can teach other people. Each one preach one. Each one teach one. Each one reach one, each one breach one. You know what I mean. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see the Messiah was born through the virgin. A virgin girl. Hallelujah. For unto us a child is born. That is Jesus the Son of Man. Unto us a son is given. He always was a son. Yes. Hallelujah. Not born a son. He was the eternal son of God. He is the eternal son of God. And he will always be the eternal son of God. Yes. But only the difference when he was born. God became man. And he is a God man. A God man is on the throne. He is 100% God and 100% man. When he left his glory in heaven, emptying himself, he did not empty himself as God. He was still God. Get that theology right. He was still God. And he became 100% man. Then, then you say, hey, he was God, so he could do things and I cannot do things. No, no, no. He withheld his privileges as God. But yet, he could forgive. Yet, he could raise the dead. Hallelujah. In other words, whatever he did, we need to do. He gives you the anointing, the grace to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah 7, 14. Messiah would be God and man. Hallelujah. The Son of God became the Son of Man in order to make the sons of men the sons of God. The whole Creation is moaning and groaning and waiting to see the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. He came with a sevenfold spirit of what Isaiah 11, 1 and 2 talks about. The spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might of knowledge and the fear of the Lord again. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just like the men all around. Seven. Sevenfold spirit, but yet one spirit. Amen. One spirit, Amen. but the sevenfold. It will be before the throne of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He rules by the sevenfold spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came to heal the blind, the lame, and the deaf. Isaiah 35, 5 and 6. 
This is a prophecy. And it happened. Messiah would be preceded by a forerunner. Isaiah 40 verse 3. To make the path straight, John the Baptist, his cousin who was six months older to him, who was filled with the spirit in the womb. Hallelujah. The greatest Old Testament prophet found in the New Testament. The least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. We are closer to Jesus than John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the best man preparing the way. He's of the old covenant. We are of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Be despised by the Jewish nation. Isaiah 49 verse 7. He would be whipped and beaten. Isaiah 50 verse 6. He would die as a guilt offering for sin. Isaiah 53 verse 10. And he would be resurrected and live forever. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Hallelujah. The Lord has said, Amen. Powerful chapters in Isaiah. So many of you love Isaiah. Amen. The prophet. All beautiful prophecies. Father, we thank you for all your people, your disciples, your disciplined ones. We thank you that each one is born again for greater works. We thank you, Lord, that the latter glory of the house of God is going to be greater than the former. We thank you, Lord God, perhaps we are born again for such a time as this. And we will deliver the goods as you have wonderful plans for each one. Never to harm, but to prosper, to give us a hope and a future. We pray that you would make us the head and not the tail, the leg and not the borrow, above and not beneath, and you would provide for us supernaturally as you are Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord God, that we would be like that burnt offering. We would surrender ourselves afresh this morning. We belong to you and only you. No wavering. Hallelujah. We want to be a people of character. The character of Christ chiseled in us. Hallelujah. We want to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We want to be empowered and envisioned to do the works of God. We come with clean hands and a pure heart into the hill of the Lord. And we worship you in spirit and in truth. Forgive us, O oh God, for the times we have failed you. The times we have grieved your Holy Spirit, quenched your Holy Spirit, resisted you. We pray that we would never, ever do it. None would blaspheme the Holy Spirit because we are committed to you. And you will grow in your grace and in your knowledge. In the name of Adonai, Yahushua HaMashiach, and God's people shout, Amen. 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 A big hand to the Lord. Hallelujah.